How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Biz Boys broadcast, where we try to give you a first impression on how to start and grow your young business. And in this video, we're going to talk about Biz Boys news. try to give you the updates on how the business world is operating, uh, where we try to give you um, uh, updates on big and small businesses and see how it affects maybe how you are going to operate your business in the next coming uh, years. So to start off, we'll just jump into it right away. Russ, Uber. Uber's, Uber. You use Uber quite a lot, right? I like Uber. Uber's, Uber's great. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uber. I, you I know, used it's... Lyft for the first time recently, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, no one uses Lyft. Everybody uses Uber, Russ. I actually enjoyed Lyft. It was it was quite it was quite nice. Okay. Well, Uber. So Uber has been uh, trying to develop basically a their autonomous vehicles. Now everybody talks about them. Yeah. Uh, Uber has invested quite a lot in their autonomous vehicles department. Uh, about I think they quoted about 865 million in the last quarter that they invested in the autonomous vehicles. Wow. And what they're actually doing is building a fleet. They're actually building their own autonomous vehicles to be able to introduce that capability into the market. Yeah. Now, this has not bode well for their profit statements, let me tell you. <laughs> so they have not been making money in the past recent years because they've been developing so much in the autonomous vehicle market. Now, Uber also has recently announced that they are going public. They're going to be going on the IPO market, and this is mostly to raise capital. Are you uh, going to buy some stock? Uh, I probably will buy some stock, okay. but it has to be right in the beginning. I think there's a whole video we can talk about stocks, but yes, I most likely will be. Um, but that'll be in That several... is not financial advice, no. by the way. No, it is not. Please do not take Especially not from this guy. Poor advice. <laughs> poor financial advice from this guy. Um, but So they're going to be going public in the next recent months, and before they do... Three Japanese companies have already bid on their value to try to get shares from Uber before it goes public. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Those uh, three companies were Denso Corp, Toyota Motor Corp, and SoftBank Group Corps, uh, which are uh, three businesses in Japan that all provided um, basically a, uh, a uh, what's the word? Do, 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 do. Uh, 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 shut up. Uh, Damn it. I'll probably have to edit most of this out. Uh, wait, you're not the editor. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. They they basically offer they gave offers that valued the arm, the autonomous vehicle department arm of Uber at over seven point two five billion dollars. Dang. Yes. So uh, the D, the deal will help Uber, which tallied a three billion operating loss last year to continue funding a very costly wait endeavor. what was that loss a three billion dollar operating loss three billion dollars yes. in losses in one year yes okay and, and of course link right. to the article so that we can uh, show you where I got these numbers um, so uh, the offering could value uber the whole thing at roughly a hundred billion dollars well only time will tell whether Pretty it crazy. actually gets that much but there is uh, there is justification I feel to that since it's basically revolutionizing a yeah. very large market. It, it, yeah, I mean uh, most of the most of the the no, more techie startups nowadays are doing this strategy where mm -hmm. they go into debt first to get users because you you can't make a profit until you have users on these platform type businesses, but you need to spend money to get you need to get the initial users so they end up going into debt uh, first so uber's uber is no different they're they're spending a bunch of money to get more users in the autonomous vehicles uh, to uh, to hopefully reduce their costs and then once they don't have to pay drivers anymore uh, they'll make a lot more profit every year um, yep and so yeah. the question is Russ is um, will Uber succeed? So this is this financial model is completely different than what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Uber has been really focused on having no inventory of any kind and focusing on just sharing profit with the drivers. Mm -hmm. Now this is completely different. They're they're developing their own inventory, their own models, which means they need to maintain and have security over their own inventory, yeah. which could severely decrease their profits. Yeah. So do you think it'll succeed? 
Uh, well, it depends on a couple things. Um, one, the competition, and two, the, uh, the financial market. Uh, probably, there's probably other factors, too. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, the competition, uh, Tesla just recently announced that they're going to try to make their, their cars into autonomous taxis mm. um, because they already have pretty, pretty good autonomy in their vehicles. Um, and uh, so they're, they're ahead of the game in that respect. They already have autonomous cars on the road. Uh, they're not fully autonomous, but they're getting there. Uh, so the Tesla is a big competition um, that would take a lot of their profits away uh, if uh, if they did eventually go autonomous. Uh, so that's one thing that might hurt them and stop them from getting there. And then the other thing is the financial market. If you're going into all of this debt uh, in, in, in the initial stages, and then the market collapses, and especially like like a corporate, if the corporate barn market goes into a bad place, you're not going to have you're not going to have any more investors. Then the people aren't going to buy your stock because it's a techy, it's a risky tech asset, and nobody wants risky tech assets when the market's doing poorly. So it depends on the market, and it depends on your competition. Is yeah. how I see it. So I guess we'll see how it goes in the coming months, whether Uber actually succeeds or fails at this. This is a, I think, a very big step, and it's going to definitely test Uber and the autonomous vehicle market and see how that develops. Maybe, okay. maybe you could take that that idea away, and that um, competition and and the market affects everybody. So if you're trying to start your if you're trying to start your own business, you have to look at your your competition and growth and and financing options in the future uh, to try to plan your strategy. Um, uh, sort sort of like Uber is trying to plan theirs right now. I think it was was it PayPal? Um, somebody uh, I, th I think yeah it was it was PayPal early in the uh, in the 2000 boom when the in the, the dot com bubble. Uh, they were trying to grow, and they had to spend a lot more money to get the users in to use PayPal in order to make a profit. Uh, they were they went into a whole bunch of debt, but they they could see that the, the bubble was going to pop soon, and they had to they had to move fast. They had to move really fast to get the um, to get the number of users to make a profit before the bubble burst, because they knew they weren't going to get any more financing after that. Very true. Uh, so Uber's in the in the same kind of position, and if you're starting some sort of uh, tech business or any 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 business really, and you you're, you're looking at financing, you need to figure out how to strategize that time wise. Very true. Moving on. So current event number two. So what I said, like uh, like I said in the beginning, I like to focus on a big business, and then I like to focus on a startup business, but in this case, it's not a startup. It's a smaller business per se, not necessarily, uh, um, you know, that much smaller. But this is really the only thing I could find in time. So uh, another uh, company has just made announcement that they will be going to the public market, and that's an African company named Jumia. So Africa made his global IPO debut, uh, debut uh, Pan-African e-commerce company Jumia, a one billion value, uh, one billion value dollar company, began trading live on the NSYSE last week. Huh. So Jumia is an online shopping destination with large collection of electronics, smartphones, groceries, computers, fashion, jewelry, and more, and has partnered with 50,000 local African companies to do this. Is now, like the African Amazon? Uh, what it's sounding like right it's, now. It pretty much is, to be perfectly Is it a platform, honest. or are they selling their own pro is it? Do they own Online all the Online shopping destination. Do, so it's their own platform. I mean, I mean, do they own all the product, or is it, are they a platform to sell other people's products? Uh, don't know. Okay. Why are you asking questions, Russ? Don't do that. <laughs> I don't have time to research everything. I'm so sorry. The company's journey since first launching operations in Nigeria in 2012 has expanded it, uh, its domain to 14 Afri uh, African countries with businesses across several verticals, including food delivery, real estate, logistics, hotel, and flight bookings. So, now, that all sounds good and dandy, but let me throw a couple monkey wrenches good in here. Good and dandy. Uh, <laughs> Don't make fun of my wording. <laughs> More um, to your interest. However, there's a lot of speculation on whether this is truly an African enterprise. So, while the company runs the largest e-commerce business across Africa, it is incorporated in Germany, meaning that it pays its corporate taxes in Germany. Okay. Also, it's headquartered in Dubai, with central tech team based in Portugal, and it's been found by a couple of French dudes, and now has stock in the New York market. So what part of this is African? <laughs> exactly. And my second point is why does it matter? <laughs> uh, so nevertheless, this whole situation raises expressions for other upstarts to follow suit and create the first continental wave of startup moguls in Africa. So the reason I brought up this article, um, Russ, was that it just begs the question, what determines a company's identity? Because a company's geographical identity is part of its brand. 
Um, for a lot of companies, it, okay. it takes, it houses its brand from where it's from and where it's based. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the whole idea of between American made, right? We Americans love American companies. Yeah. So, um, what do you think, what part Watches of the company... Watches from Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, sausages from Germany. Uh, Belgium waffles. Belgium waffles. Germany beer. Mm, yeah. It's, it's, it's geographical uh, identity is a huge part of somebody's brand. Yeah. So the question is, what determines someone's geographical identity? Is it their headquarters, their primary market, where they pay taxes? What? What determines it? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good. So I think I think the uh, the best thing I can find is that it's headquarters. For the most part, it's where you're headquartered mm -hmm. um, is your geographical identity. Um, but there's I guess I'd say where the most users are. The most users, so that's where you go. You're a primary market um, mm -hmm. uh, advocate, yeah. and I think that's that's a, also a fair definition. I think the over uh, the overall thing to learn is there is no definition yeah. of where a company establishes itself. It just makes an argument, and people most of the time agree with it or they don't. So they're trying to brand themselves as an African they're company. They're hugely. They basically their success was because that they were the first big African company. Interesting. Uh, their expansion in the African market was because they were. That's an interesting way to brand yourself because nobody really likes investing in Africa mm -hmm. uh, in, t in terms of making making money. Yep. Like, People invest in Africa as more of like a charity case, unless you're unless you're China, and uh, China invests in in Africa in the hopes that they'll become the new manufacturing hub, and China doesn't have to do it anymore. Yep. Uh, yep. So that's uh, that's for Jumia for Africa. I wish the company mm, success in the coming years, um, and we'll see how it does. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting story that I just scrolled through as I was looking through. Okay. All right. So finally, we're gonna end this video with my favorite segment. Did this business succeed? Which is a great name. <laughs> I gotta come up with a better one, but that's what I got for now. Okay. So, like last week, Russ, I gave you a business idea and mm -hmm. I had you guess whether this business succeeded. Uh -huh. Okay. So, we're gonna do the same thing because I'm very uncreative. Okay. But it's gonna be a different business this time. Oh. That's the key. Oh. Okay. You're not gonna give me the same business every week? <laughs> no. Okay. Hoping that you forgot. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the business this week is called NavD. You ever heard of that, Russ? No. NavD. NavD. So uh, here Today. we're going to link a short clip on NavD, which was a promotional video when the company first got started. Okay. All right. If you're like me, your phone is basically always out. You're texting, using your apps, checking your tweets. And even in the car, you have this compulsion to treat it the same way. But you can't because when you do, bad things happen. Oh, mother. You can mount your phone on the dash for navigation, <laughs> sure. But is that any safer? No, it's not. It's bad. You need your eyes in front of you. You need NavD. <laughs> so NavD you is can a text portable both device you put on your dashboard. With every mobile app you'd need to keep your eyes on the road ahead. It's a heads up display, just like what commercial airline pilots use when they're landing. You hear that? Pilots use it. I don't think it's just like commercial There's a airlines. tiny, super high quality projector that puts the UI on a transparent screen in your field of view, projected like it's two meters out in front of you. So you never have to adjust your focus away from your driving. It connects wirelessly to your phone on iOS or Android and has its own apps, all designed around the driving experience. Is he driving a Ford Fusion with a Hi, Bentley Mom. logo? Hi, Ed. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay, I love like. you. I'm making a video right now. Oh, okay, I'll let you go. Just wanted to say I love you. Okay, I love you. You use hand gestures and your voice to control it. Read new text. Hey, bro. That's pretty cool. Where are you? Reply. I'm right here, friend. Share my location. Play Sugar Beef. Ah, Sugar Beef. It's a fake band name. I made it up for this video. <laughs> I want to introduce you to someone. This is Doug. Navdi is his thing. He's real excited about it. This is a very long it's video. It's really cool. And I think you're going to want to Literally only two Driving minutes. with Doug and Nav. Our videos are 20 minutes. Like I don't have enough patience, Jason. This is the new age. Seven. Our video is coming and to 14 minutes. Want one in your car yeah, too. well. Feels like driving in the future. Okay. So I have heard of NavD. I didn't recognize it by the name, but I have seen that before, and it's NavD. Yeah. Okay. So now the question is for us, did, did NavD succeed? So a little background. NavD mm -hmm. started as a crowdfunded campaign, okay. raised a total of 40, uh, $41.8 million in four rounds, which is one of the most successful crowdfunding campaigns, okay. uh, according to Crunchbase.com. Now, the price for the uh, unit uh, early supporters was about $300. Mm -hmm. 
And now, uh, Cat Navni boasted the capability of having voice hand control, movement control, as you can see in the video, GPS location pinning, text phone call, and vehicle integration with the speedometer and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the Navni's plan was to release in major retailers and partners with car and auto manufacturers, and the customer for Navni is anybody with a vehicle. So, Russ, I mean, they, did Navni succeed? Well, they've got a big market and a, looked like a pretty good product. I, I'd, I had, I'd have to use it and look at some of their reviews. Nope, to trust, be, you I don't know, have that time. I, I, I don't have the time, but I, I would like that time <laughs> if I could have it. Um, I'm guessing no, because I haven't seen it anywhere in person, but I would like it to have succeeded. So I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna hope and be optimistic that Navdi succeeded because that technology, if it, when it gets better, is gonna be great. Especially when there's autonomous vehicles and you can make the whole windscreen, the whole windshield a screen. That'd be cool. Anyway. Well, Russ, I'll have a fun time on your social media profile because Navdi failed. Oh, we, we were betting this one again? <laughs> yes, we were. Oh, I didn't remember this was a bet. <laughs> yep. oh, oh, crap. Every video, it's a bet. It's a competition. That's what life is. You didn't remind me of that. <laughs> yeah. So, it was first announced in 2015, and it was a rough road. Uh, when, or 2014, my apologies. 2014, and it was a rough road. So, it launched eventually in 2016 after it developed at a price point on the market for $800. <laughs> Okay. Um, obviously, the earlier supporters. That's very expensive. Yes, and the earlier supporters were upheld at three hundred dollars with a huge loss in profits, because they didn't originally guess the unit price. So when they finally developed the price and put it at eight hundred dollars, they realized they had a huge uh, profit loss. At eight hundred dollars? Yes. Like, like, did it cost like twelve hundred or something to well, make these things? No, because they sold it at eight hundred dollars, so it probably cost less than eight hundred dollars. It, oh. it wouldn't make, it wouldn't cost twelve hundred dollars if they sold it on the open market for eight hundred dollars. You said they sold it at a loss, though. Well, yes, at eight hundred dollars, it's a loss. Meaning it cost them more to make it, so like twelve hundred. No, 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 no. Uh, so the early supporters upheld three hundred was at a loss. So the early supporters okay. got it at three hundred dollars. That's what the loss. Ah, was. oh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So let me say that again. So the that early supporters. Sense. Basically got their products at three hundred dollars, mm. um, where they put it on the open market for eight hundred dollars. So they made law, they lost money for every earlier supporter upheld. Okay. So that's 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 a better way of saying it. Now the uh, the price did eventually cut down to four hundred dollars. So that might be where the unit price is. Is it somewhere in between three hundred and four hundred dollars? Economies of scale. They started making more. They brought the price down. Either that or nobody was buying it, <laughs> and they were desperate. And they had a big inventory, and they just had to sell them. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so the biggest thing, the problem was they never got their MVP right. So they okay. actually basically put in a lot of features in that video before mm -hmm. they actually developed the product. That was a lot of CGI stuff. So uh, that wasn't actually a product. Yeah, I was looking at some of them like that doesn't. I've never that, that that would be great if it was real. I was skeptical about several of them, especially yes. the um, the voice command that said uh, it was a it was a texting where he, he he's like I'm right here, bud. Share my location. I was like a voice command wouldn't be able to differentiate share my location. Yep. Maybe it could, but so so basically they never defined their MVP. They never actually figured out what value the product needs to have to be valuable to the customers. So but. <laughs> Instead of doing that, they basically launched a promotional video. It was like, hey, these things would be really cool. We haven't invented them yet, but these would be really cool. Yeah. So that really hurt them because in through the development, they actually had to cut some of the key features in the video. Um, things like uh, the vehicle integration speedometer, they actually couldn't figure out how to make that work because a lot of that is basically you have to hook up to the, to the actual vehicle, have an electrical connection, yeah. not just a wireless signal. Yeah. Um, and they actually had to get rid of the maps part. They couldn't actually broadcast a map onto the display. Wow. So they actually got rid of quite a lot of things and the GPS. Uh, I think they eventually figured out how to do GPS, but in the first round of delivery, they had no GPS. So they made a lot That's of- That's like the biggest thing is the I, GPS. I know. So they really, really should have spent more time developing the MVP and more time in development and then promote the product. Yeah. It's like if we in Barry Wi-Fi thought we could do all these great things and send out a marketing video to everybody without actually testing with our clients first. Yeah. So that was the whole reason we did it that way. Um, so lessons learned from this. Uh, the first lessons learned is they raised $42 million in their uh, crowdfunding, but they lost most of it because they were headquartered in LA and they lost a lot of two overhead costs. Uh -huh. 
So they lost a lot to staffing, to just renting, yeah. and things like that, office equipment. They lost a lot of their money because We of know that. a lot about that living in L.A. Yes. <laughs> so we can understand that pain. Uh, and the, the uh, final lesson learned, I already touched on it. They sent out the promotional video before the MVP, which mm. I think is a crucial mistake. Yeah. And that's, that's, some, that's, that's a mistake a lot of businesses make. But it really yeah. ultimately was we've, the nail we've, the we've started putting out some marketing material a little too early, I think. Um, Luckily, we haven't gone full blown into that yet, so we've we've already learned our lesson. But yeah. Yep. All right. So that's it. That's all I have for this week. So Russ, I'm gonna have fun messing with your social media. Oh no. Uh, because you... I I think you cheated. You didn't tell me that we were actually betting on this one. <laughs> I didn't remember. Russ, just but, because you don't remember. But, okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair right. enough. So that does it for this week's on Biz Boys News. Uh, thank <laughs> you for tuning in for today this week. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, leave any uh, in the comments any uh, future um, uh, ideas for a video, anything you want us to touch on in the next week we can talk about. Uh, just please let us know. Thanks. Otherwise, peace out. See you next time.